Heavenly Father, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit this morning as we begin our study. Um, my hope is to tie some of these thoughts together over the past few days. I ask that you would uh, grant me that ability. Um, let what we teach here today bind off several thoughts um, for your glory and your honor. Please pour your latter rain out at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. What I'm doing over here is already, we just did this a few days ago. Um, this is the footsteps of the history of Future for America. Um, and to me, uh, there's passages where Sister White speaks about the message of Millerite history. And she says things such as the, the message that they were given was testified to by the miraculous working of the power of God. So the message of Future for America has been given, has been testified to by the miraculous working of God's Spirit. And so my argument is, in terms of standing on the weight of evidence, that when we go back into the history of Future for America, um, the money given for this school on June 22nd, June 22nd is a waymark in Millerite history in, in this line of Samuel Snow. It is one of the waymarks we deal with. We received the money for this school, and three years later to the very day, uh, we give our first camp meeting on the opening light of Ezra 7-9. 120 days after that is the second camp meeting, and then 70 days after that takes us into uh, Germany for a camp meeting where this message of Ezra 7-9 is now in the Western world and in Europe. Um, and of course, the 120 and 70 is the, the element of Ezra 7 9 that was opened up to us. This here from this first camp meeting, um, if you go four times 391 days in the future, it takes you to October 3rd, 2018. And October 3rd, 2018 is when the last of the three elements of the Midnight Cry are put in place. Uh, uh, this was the counterfeit by Tess. The waymark was correct. November 9th is a waymark, uh, but she corrupted that waymark with a bunch of false teachings about November 9th. But it was established as um, the third waymark on October 13th, 10 days later. So from the first CAM meeting where we begin to open up Ezra 7-9 and the Midnight Cry message, which comes in three mud puddles in three steps. Ezra 7-9, Rafi and Paneum, and then the chronology of November 9th. Let's express it that way. From the beginning, on June 22nd, three years after, exactly after we received the money for this school, um, four times 391 days takes you to Tess's presentation of November 9th, and 4 times 391 days plus 10 takes you to October 13th when November 9th is established. And this 10-day period in between these two um, is representing a testing process because now this movement is going to be tested on whether they can see the distinction between the counterfeit and the true message, the counterfeit midnight crime message, the true midnight crime message, that at this point, the distinction between those two messages is being marked by the line of the tribe of Judah. Uh, the P and T movement is going to ultimately totally reject um, their chronology that is used to establish October 13th. Um, they're going to get aggressive about rejecting it, um, even uh, at the very at a very way mark on August 29th, 2019. So we went through this there, and I told you there's more to this line uh, than simply the step by steps. There's chiasms that are also verified in the line of Ezekiel and in the line of Revelation 9 and in the line of Millerite history. One of the things I want to point out to you here is the second step. I'll put number one here. Um, this is Ezra 7 9. The second step is Rafi and Paneum. Um, that's opened up. The Lord removes his hand on uh, December 17th, 2016. Seven days later, um, I'm presenting this message publicly for the first time in Bant, Holland. 
And then 21 days after that, um, I'm in Canada presenting this message. But the, the message in Canada isn't simply Rafi and Paneum. It's the emphasis on pan and Paneum and the, the symbolism of the, the word pan. But what I want you to see here is in this history where this particular element of the midnight cry, the second part, Rafi and Paneum, Raphia and Paneum, that you can see a 7 and a 21 structure. Okay, because we're going to see that again in our history um, from July 4th to um, July 31st. Okay, and uh, this is the history of 2020. And in between here, when we get to um, July 10th, and you, I'm counting, counting this inclusively, okay, when you get to July 10th, then you will have seven days from July 4th. And what is July 4th? And you're going to say, now oh, that's the Independence Day celebrating the American Revolution. No, this is the end of the 100 days of prayer that the Adventist Church has instituted on March 27th, okay? Then you have seven days um, that takes you to July 10th, and then 21 days that takes you to July 31st. So I want you to see this connection between these two concepts because they're, they're in a chiasm together um, speaking to us. Of course, 21 representing midnight. Lots of, lots of symbolism there. Anyway. Um, midnight based on one other witness, what? That 21 is midnight? Uh-huh. Where do we get 21 is midnight? July. Where was midnight in the Millerite history? July, 20th. July 21st, 21st okay, at the Boston Tabernacle, which the, why do the, okay. why do the, the Millerites call that midnight? Sister White calls it midway. midway. But why, does, why do the pioneers, when they deal with July 21st, call that midnight? Do you remember? They realized that they were in the midway and they yeah they realized they were in the midway but they were treating they were treating the prophecy of 2300 evenings and mornings so they were t treating this history of April 19th to October 22nd in terms of uh, morning and evening and the dead center of a day was midnight okay so in in their application um, okay, and we, we, uh, we had several, I'm not going to put them up here, we had several of these n numerical revelations about coming camp meetings that begin in this history, uh, but we noticed that, uh, among other things, at the first Italian camp meeting, this is first Italian, second Italian, we had a, a, a Sabbath miracle, a Sabbath miracle. We have connections here. This a connection. I'm not going to try to do the connections. We did them already, but we begin to see 126s, 120s. We, here we have 120, 126. Here we have 120, 126. And we have 391.5 um, that is spanning this history taking us up here to October 3rd and October 10th of 2018 when the third element of the midnight cry comes in, um, which I'll, I'll call time. And this is Rafi and Paneum and this is Ezra 7-9. So you, when you look at that, it's pretty profound. But now I want to focus in as we, we come to a conclusion of this consideration of chronology and time before we bring this back into uh, the four kingdoms of Daniel's last vision, the beast, the dragon, the false prophet, and 144,000. Um, I want to look at... This study is called, in the notes, The Midnight Chiasm. 
uh, that has taken place in our history. But before we do, Odilio sent in an email uh, based upon information from yesterday's presentation. So I'm going to start with his email and then I'm going to go into where I want to go. Okay, this is Odilio's email, but I, I edited it a little bit. So he's speaking to me. In the last presentation, you mentioned the 153 of Samuel Snow's letters, and also the 153 fishes from John 21:11. Is it fishes or fish? Fish, okay, um, indicating that the number of 153 is a symbol of prophesy again or prophecy. John 21:11 also mentions the name Peter. Okay, so he's going to quote John 21:11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. It says fishes, and 153, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Okay. Um, so he's going to tie in another revelation of Peter. And we've already did earlier, not so long ago in this presentation, we've dealt with Peter in the story of Pan. Peter Pan. Okay. And upon this rock he will build his church. So we've already identified Peter as the 144,000. Um, but Odilio says, Acts 1.15 also mentions Peter in the context of the upper room experience of Pentecost, at which time the loud cry was given for the Levites of that history. Right? The disciples, they're in the upper room and they're getting ready to, to carry the message to the rest of the Hebrews before probation for the Hebrews closes in AD 34 at the stoning of Stephen. It mentions the number 120, a symbol for the priests. So he's saying that that upper room experience is the priests reaching out to the Levites at Pentecost. And he quotes it. And in those days, Peter stood up, and, and I spelled that wrong. I got ensign. That's ensign. Okay, when Peter stands up, he's an ensign in the story of Pentecost. And in those days, Peter stands up as an ensign in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. So he's saying, okay, here's Peter standing up as an ensign as the priest for the Levites in this story of Pentecost. And they're getting ready to give a message. Combining the numbers of these two passages, 153, prophecy, plus 120, priest, equals 273 which is the Levites. Or in other words, a prophecy given by the priest will bring in the Levites. You see that? John 21, 11 and Acts 1, 15, if you add them together, 21, 11 plus 1, 15, comes to 2.226. Um, and 2 is a doubling, point two twenty six is June 22nd, and June 22nd, remember, what is June 22nd in, the, in, the, in Samuel Snow's history? It's Pentecost, and June 22nd is a symbol of Pentecost. Okay, so the story is about Pentecost, and the numerical values is speaking to Pentecost. The total comes up to 226, and if you put a point between the first two and the the last three digits, 226, then you have the doubling of the midnight cry, and you have 226 being June 22nd, being Pentecost. Also, 2.226 divided by 273, what's 273 a symbol of? The Levites, equals 8.15. And what's 8.15? It's August 15th, it's the midnight cry. Okay, also, 2111 plus 153 equals 2.264. Two, a doubling of the midnight cry, and 264 is the 26th day of the fourth month, which is July 18th. So you'd have to work through this and read it a couple times, but it's all, it's all there. It's a pretty cool observation by Odilio. Concerning the 123 or 153, we're saying that 
over here from 9-11, we have more than, one, more than two witnesses to the 150. You have the 150 years of the fifth trumpet, and you have the 150 days of Elizabeth being in hiding. We dealt with this yesterday. But I'm saying we also can bring into this history, this is where the Omega movement brought the doctrine of infallibility into this history, in the line of the priest, and it, they did it 150 years after that doctrine was put into place by the papacy in the First Vatican Council. Um, and remember, that was on July 18th, 1870. July 18th, 1870 has two internal witnesses to 187. July 18th, 187, but 1870, 187. But that was 150 years. So we bring that 150 years in here and we get to midnight. And at midnight, we got several witnesses for the number 30, whether it's the 30th year of this movement, the 300 of Gideon, um, this month, which is 30 days, the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, or the fact that if you're going to be a priest, you're going to be 30 years old. So we get the 153 saying that in this history, the message that's going to go to the Levites in the sixth month is being put together. Okay, everyone... Follow that. That's where we were dealing with the 153. But now I want to go to what I'm calling the midnight chiasm on page two of today's notes. And uh, walk through this with us. Uh, I think I will put it down here. probability date again? I know it's July 18, 1870 to what? 150 years takes you to 2020. Okay, just to 2020. Yeah, it, to the year 2020. Okay, that's what I want. What I'm saying is that in the year 2020, um, you get you have the yep, the authority of, of placing the 150 there at that at where it arrives there. Okay, so in the midnight chiasm, you have this in your notes so it'll be much it much it'll be more clearly represented in your notes than I do with my poor handwriting skills okay this is the chiastic structure um, and it begins on September 7th, but uh, actually this history that we're dealing with begins back here on 829. I don't know if it begins there, but this is a, a noted waymark. This is the identifying midnight for us. This here we've identified as Ezekiel 1.1. Okay, this is when the sanctuary is opened up to Ezekiel. But I'm saying that this structure here beginning at 9, 7. 9 times 7 is 63. And there are 63 days that takes us to November 9th. And then 63 days that takes us to January 11th. I'm saying that in this history, the sanctuary is opened up to Ezekiel where he sees the wheels within the wheels. And that this is all about midnight because this takes place at midnight. This is where things are opening up, being opened up to us as the priests. And what's being opened up to us is opened up at the very time that the PNT movement has reached the climax of their second message. Okay, they're a counterfeit movement. And the second angel's message is empowered at the midnight cry. And at the, at the empowerment of the second angel's message, you have a visual manifestation. The second angel is always a visual manifestation. Okay, Noah's warning message and work to build the ark was the first angel's message. The second angel's message in the history of Noah is the animals getting on the ark. It was visual. 
The third angel's message in the story of Noah is the door closing. And we have many witnesses after that. The second message is a visual. And right here, on August 29th, not only do you have 220 years since the Pope died in captivity back in 1779, and popery is being reestablished in this movement as the leaders of the PNT movement give Odilio and Stephen the bull that you either reject this chronology of July 18th or you're an anathema to us. And uh, Popery is restored on August 29th. And here is also where you are told as a sister in the movement in Germany, you either put on pants and give a visual demonstration that you have rejected the health message or you're lost and you will receive the mark of the beast. This is what they were told in Germany. And 10 days later, now there's a testing process marked, 10 days later takes us to September 7th, okay, to the midnight chiasm. And here the Lord now is going to open up these truths, all these truths, the truths of the kingdom of the priest, the 144,000, the truth of the kingdom of the dragon, the beast, and false prophet that are found in Daniel's last vision. So are you suggesting that there is a counterfeit three angels message that went on that arrived in 2014, the counterfeit second angel, and it was empowered on August 29th, the empowerment of the counterfeit second angel? Is there an actual three-step message that uh, yes, it, evil angels uh, are coming I'm not down? suggesting that. That's absolutely airtight. So when did it arrive? When did it arrive in 2014? Uh, what? No, the second angel. The the yesterday the yesterday we put in the record that the rebellion that takes place in that movement is the four step process of the four generations. Okay, and that rebellion begins in 2009 when uh, Parminder is given the privilege of opening up the 2520. Other people could have did it, but we asked him to do it. And so from 2009, you have this four generations, and we looked at that, but definitely this is a counterfeit. We looked at the 13 characteristics of the Omega movement, of which they fulfill every one. Um, so the evidence is, is it's a counterfeit across the board. So even without going back in and identifying the way marks of their counterfeit three angels messages, um, for certain, um, when you get to 2012 to 2014, in terms of the four generations, now they're having their secret conspiracy going underway, but they have a message. And they're saying you have to accept this message or you're lost. That message is 2014 was the Sunday law. That's their first angel's message. Okay, that is fear God. Okay, fear this message. You got to accept this message. Um, and it's going to transcend, transcend into their second angel's message. And after 2014, you're going to see Parminder beginning to constantly speak about him being the second angel, and this is the second angel's message. But it reaches, it's empowered here. I, don't, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this particular element, but it was empowered here when it became their visual test. And they said it. In Germany, they said it outright. This is our visual test. You must put on those pants or you will receive the mark of the beast. I mean, they've been open. They've been open. We are the Omega, okay? Sister White warns about the Omega. They said, we are the Omega movement. It's, it's crazy that the people in there that have any kind of background in Adventism aren't just shocked by the claims that they've made, let alone praising the Pope of Rome and the Jesuit order. Okay, that isn't where I wanted to go, all right? Midnight chiasm, midnight chiasm. Here, what's happening is the Lord is opening the temple, okay? Temple opened in terms of Ezekiel. The temple's opened, but by here, you've went through this opening up in this chiastic structure, here Gideon has went down into the enemy's camp. And he went down in the, into the enemy's camp and he heard the, the dream and the interpretation thereof. And he 
And he knows when he heard it, because he heard it on this Sabbath. These are all Sabbaths, by the way. He heard it on this Sabbath when Daniel was speaking. That's when the lights came on, okay? And suddenly, the Daniel's last vision, the problem wasn't understanding it any longer. The problem was putting it into a, a package that people could understand. So it was opened up. The message was opened up here, just as Ezekiel's temple was opened up. But it's a complex message. It deals with the counterfeit priests, Okay, the 144,000 has three lines, prophet, priests, and kings. So when you're, you're dealing with the prophet element of the 144,000, you're dealing with the true prophet and the false prophet. You're de dealing with Elijah, Mount Carmel. When you're dealing with the priest line, you're dealing with true priests, false priests. And when you're dealing with kings, the king, you're, you're dealing with the story of the throne of David. But... In that same history, what's opened up is the history of the King of the South, the dragon, the history of the papacy, Fatima, and the history of the Constitution, Trump, the United States, the false prophet. So many things are opened up in this history. This chiasm is speaking to the message that's opened up. So in your notes, you see 9, 7, plus 11, 9, plus 1, 11, equals 327. You follow me on that? It's in your notes. Yes. 327 is what? March 27th. So this, this midnight chiasm is teaching us about the opening up of the message and it's at the same time it's saying that the message is March 27th. Okay, it's, that's the emphasis that we're going to see when we put the March 27th chiastic structure on the line. But also, if you reverse it into the European way of expressing the calendar from 9-7 to 7-9, from 11-9 to 9-11, that doesn't change. It takes you to November or January, 1st, January 11th. It takes you to here. the total. So it's saying that on January 11th the message has been opened up and the message of the priest at January 11th is the message of March 27th. You all following that logic from this chiastic structure? It's saying that the center of this chiastic structure, this story of midnight, is the opening of the temple. The opening of the temple is the opening of the message. Okay, that's why when we're up here, when we get to midnight, what's being opened? The message, 153. Okay, the message, 153, is thou must prophesy again. Okay, how many times did they have to prophesy again in Millerite history? Pardon me? I'm guessing. Well, don't guess. Prophesy again one more time. Prophesy again is one more time. They had to do it twice. Okay, the, Revelation 10, 11 is prophesy again, and we apply that correctly. After October 22nd, 1844, after that disappointment, it's saying Adventism's going to got another message, message. It's not over. But you can bring that back to the first disappointment on April 19th, uh, 1844, and you can go into Jeremiah 15, as we did yesterday. And the Lord says to Jeremiah, after that first disappointment, and why was he disappointed in the first disappointment in Jeremiah 15? Because of the Lord's hand. He thought that he had lied, but he had not lied. You have to wait for the appointed time, though it tarry wait for it, it will not lie. So <clears throat> Jeremiah <clears throat> was disappointed on, on April 19th, 1844, and the Lord said, If you will return unto me, you will be as my mouth. From April 19th to October 22nd, 1844, did they prophesy again? Yes. What was their 
prophecy again prophecy. It was Samuel Snow's midnight cry message now comes, okay? So they had to prophesy again twice in their history. Snow's is a prophesy again. Miller was wrong in 1843, prophesy again, and Mark 1844. And then at the disappointment in 1844, it's saying Adventism will have to prophesy again. Is the Millerite history repeated to the very letter? Amen. So what is November 9th? What is November 9th? It's prophesied again. You can see that here. But what is it? It's the center of a chiasm. We're going to walk through this in really baby steps. It's the first disappointment. It's the first disappointment. Where is the second disappointment? The Sunday law. What's the Sunday law? July 18th. Second disappointment. Did the door close at the second disappointment in Millerite history? On October 22nd, 1844. Is it going to close again here? Yes. All right, I got some hands now or some thoughts. <laughs> yes. So are we, are we supposed to have learned then by the time we get to July 18th from the first disappointment, the second disappointment, the third disappointment, and now the fourth disappointment on July 18th, are we supposed to have learned something about July 18th and how to approach it? Because the Miller... Well, so first, sure, sure. Because I'll, I'll pass. Three things those that will not be benefited by history are destined to repeat it, okay? We have nothing to fear for the future except as we forget the Lord's leading in our past history and experience, but I know. He knows probably what I'm about to say. Uh, but no, go ahead. Disappointments weren't realized. Yeah, they were. What wasn't realized? Their expectations were not realized in the first three disappointments. Forget the first three. There's all kinds of disappointments. But the three that were specifically. I'm dealing about. with all of them. Every disappointment in sacred history comes down to this disappointment. There's a misunderstanding a human misunderstanding that we picked up from traditions and customs that have been handed down from generation to generation that invariably tweaks our understanding when we come to that way mark that represents the disappointment. Whether it's this one, did we have some misunderstandings about November 9th? Oh, yeah. What were, what, and I've tried to address those yesterday. I don't know that I was clear about them. What was the, the misunderstanding that we had picked up from 9-11 onward about November 9th. Closed door for everyone. All the priests. Everyone. Just, yeah, all the priests. Oh. Okay, but that isn't the case. What's happening here is that the two movements are being separated. The, one, the leadership of the other movement, their door is closed. So will we have some kind of misconception about July 18th? Yes. yes. Was did the Millerites have some misconceptions about October twenty second, eighteen forty four? Was the date correct? Yes. Yes. Air tight. Amen. No problem. The date was correct. So we're, I'm not. I'm not suggesting. I don't think we can move the date. We can't move the date. But there's, there has to be something that we're not quite fully understanding about this date. Okay, so what? I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not trying to turn anything upside down. I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to acknowledge the prophetic evidence and then move forward. Okay, so in your notes, um, what I want you to see here is that January 11th has two witnesses. It has the conclusion of the chiasm that takes you here, 6363. Uh, it has more than two witnesses. When you understand that the three touches, uh, there, there's lots of witnesses, but the actual expression of January 11th is here in the calendar. And then when you begin to add the numbers, it's doubled here. Okay, the European addition takes you to January 11th. The two dates that come from the addition of 9 7, 11 9, and 1 11 is the message, March 27th, 
and the opening up of the message, when the message was opened up, January 11th, okay? And we're saying that at midnight is when the message was opened up. And here it's just a singular way mark, but what I'm saying is the opening up of this message is this chiastic structure that gets placed right here. And it gets placed right where you can see 153, which is the symbol of thou must prophesy again. Okay, see the connection. So, next, next line. One, there is a phenomenon in the Millerite history of 1260 days followed by 273 days equals 1533 days. We know this phenomenon, this is easy to see. We know that from August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844 is 1,533 days. Yes? Do we know that? Okay, which is a symbol of the glorious manifestation of the power of God. But for 1,260 days from August 11th, 1840 and 273 days before October 22nd, is January 23rd Gregorian, which is January 11th in the Julian. Alright, so it, I don't know if you're, if you're getting that, but you did get that. In this manifestation of power from 1840, and it's August 11th, 1840, to October 22nd, 1844, is 1540. 33 days, but there is a division in it of 1260 days and 273 days. You see it? You see what I'm saying? Say amen if you see it. Okay, add them up. 1260 and 273 is what? 1533. What is 273? It's March 27th, isn't it? Okay, this is the European way to express it. 273 is March 27th. That would be Levites, symbol of the Levites, but it's also the symbol of the message to the Levites. And where that ends in the Julian is January 11th. Do you see that? Julian. What does that mean? That means that this history here is emphasizing January 11th and March 27th the same way that this chiastic structure is emphasizing March 27th and January 11th. And it does so in the history that is a manifestation of the power of God. Okay, so you follow that second witness. Yes? <laughs> okay, let's walk through it again. The midnight chiasm is, saying, is identifying when God opens the temple to the priest, to the message. And what it's emphasizing is that the message that they come to understand is the message that is to be given to the Levites. That is the 327, March 27th. Okay, the 273 is a symbol. You can express March 27th as 273. Right? Mm -hmm. This is American, this is European on the calendar. Yes? So 273 is a symbol of March 27th. Okay, so we went through the midnight chiasm and what I'm saying is in this history, what, the, what is Brahman? This is for Brahman. What defines the theme of the chiasm? Middle the middle point. And what is this middle point? Midnight. It's Ezekiel 1.1. Is 1-1 one, one a doubling? It's also the 11th. But it takes place in the 30th year on the... How's it read? Ezekiel 1-1 one, one says... 
Now it came to pass in the 30th year, was November 9th, the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month. What's the fourth day, fourth month, fifth day in Millerite history? It's July 21st. It's July 21st, which is midnight. Okay? And it's the fifth day, the, f the fourth month, fifth day, which is what? 45. So you got here, it's opened up. Midnight's opened up. The, the temple's opened up in Ezekiel 1 1. He's going to give us our message. Okay? 1 1 is a doubling, is it not? But 1-1 one, one is also 11. 11 is one of the subjects here on two witnesses. So you can put an 11 up here with 11-9. You can put an 11 up here with Ezekiel 1-1. One, one. You can put an 11 here. You can put 11 here. But because it's the, the fifth day of the fourth month, you can put a 45 up here. And you can put, because of the fifth day of the fourth month in 1844, being July 21st, you can put 21 here. And 21 is a symbol of midnight. Okay, so Ezekiel 1-1 is where the temple is open and the wheels within the wheels are all confusing to Ezekiel. But the Lord brings order to it. When does the Lord bring order to it? Right here. Right here. On the, he opens it up. The message. And what is the message that he opens up? March 27th. The message to the Levites. Because he opens it up here at midnight, which is 153, and he says to this movement, Thou must prophesy again. Well, we have must prophesy again. What is our message? Our message is March 27th. The message to the Levites. Okay. I've went over that. Now I want to give you a second witness to, to some of the claims here from Millerite history. From August 11, 1840 to October 22, 1844 is 1,533 days, which is a symbol of the power of God. All right. But in these days, if you project 1260 days, what is 1260 a valid prophetic symbol? Even Adventism acknowledges that one. Okay, it takes you to January 11th on the Julian, leaving 273 days until October 22nd. So this manifestation of the power of God can be divided into two parts. A 126 and a 273. Okay, so when you get here, you get to January 11th. Over here at January 11th in our history, what has been done is the message to the Levites has been opened up. Yes? Yes. Okay, so what is the symbol of the message to the Levites? March 27th, which is also 273. So this history here is giving a witness to what we are claiming here, if you can see it. And this history here is tied together, I don't know if it's tied together, it's, it's, it's based upon 1533, which is up here. 1533 is up here as well. So these three lines are all getting tied together. Are you with me? Okay, so, yes. Couldn't we also tie the 263s, which equal 126, to the 1260? Yes, yeah, good for you. This 6363 would be speaking to this 126. So what he's saying is, if you take these two 63s and plug them in here, 63 and 63 is 126, it takes you to January 11th, the same way this 63, 63 takes you to January 11th. Yeah. yeah. You all with me? Okay, but what I want you to see here, uh, what I want you to remember, this is Millerite history, yes? yes. In Millerite history, there is a 1260, 273. Okay, there's this 
1260-273, because there's going to be a 1260-273 in our history, and I want you to remember that when we get to that point in our history. Yes? Yeah. Boy, you guys are really uh, uh, silent today. Okay. The next graph is... The graph that begins in January 14th, 2017. What is January 14th, 2017? Canada. Panium is opened up. Panium. All right. It's, it's been opened up. Uh, I'm going to do it this way. It's been opened up December 17th, 12. 17th, 2016, one week later, on 12-24-2016, Rafi and Paniam is taught for the first time, okay, for the first time, and then on 1-14-2017, the real punchline of Rafi and Paniam is opened up, and that's Paniam. That's pan. That's what we're in right now. We're in the, pan the, the, the pandemic, the panic, the pandemonium of the fact that Paneum arrived for the false prophet when Trump was vindicated of those impeachment charges. Okay, so, so how many days to here? Seven. From this date, 17, to here is seven days. How many days from here to here? 21. Okay, right? Yes, that's right. So here in this history, I want you to see that you have this little phenomenon of 721. Okay, in the chart, you're going to see down here, uh, uh, the second graph on page two, the one in the middle of the three graphs, you, you go to January 14th right here, and it projects over to March 27th with a line. March 27th, which is 327 or 7 or 273, right? And how many days is that? 1533. It's 1,533 days. But what happens if you go to 1,260 days from there? It takes you to June 27th, which is 6, 27, 2020. And how many days does it leave? 273. Okay, you seen that before? Yes. You've seen it down here in Millerite history. This is, this is a repetition of Millerite history. This would be August 11th in Millerite history. This would be October 22nd in Millerite history. And this is 327, 2021. I, w I want you to see this, this lining up with this. Everyone there? So are you willing to put the characteristics on June 27th, 2020, the same weight that you put on the January 11th on the previous two histories? Am I willing to put... The same weight on June 27th as you've given from the Millerite history January 11th and our history January 11th. Yeah, yeah, because what, what is June 27th? January 11th. No. I mean, well, well, if you're going to take this, this line and bring it up here, you're going to say it's January 11th. And the midnight chaos is going to be But if you're going to take the message of the midnight cry as it first arrived, how, where did the midnight cry message first arrive? It arrived with Samuel Snow. Okay. And there are certain way marks in Samuel Snow's history that are marked by his publications, correct? 
And one of them was Pentecost. And what was Pentecost in Samuel Snow's history? It was June 22nd. And June 27th, 2020, is June 22nd in the Julian. And it's Pentecost. And Pentecost is what? According to Acts 1.15, where we begin with Odilio's presentation today. It's where the priests are going to prophesy again to the Levites. Remember where we... Pardon me? Well, what's that mean? What's that mean? Okay, is it June 22nd is a symbol of Pentecost. It's a symbol, as you're claiming, of January 11th. And what's left is the message to the Levites. It's saying that this way mark that comes after this 1260 that leads to the 273 is emphasizing the message to the Levites. Is it, this is more complicated evidently than I thought it was going to be. I think this is clear as, a, clear as the day. The math is clear and the lines are clear with the math, but the meaning behind the math is, is a little hazy. No, I don't think the meaning is hazy. I think that you're being a little bit hazy perhaps, okay? Now let's walk through this again. I, I'm not being critical, even if that sounds critical, I'm, I'm being accurate. You have the midnight chiasm. All the evidence is, is this where the Lord opens the message to us? Okay, he's, the message he's opening at midnight is prophesy again now to the Levites, okay? It's about the message being opened up, the message to the Levites. It's opened up on January 11th. And the message is March 27th, which we haven't done yet. March 27th chiasm is the message to Levites, okay? March 27th is Levites. So we, we go into Millerite history... We know that this history is the manifestation of the power of God. We plug a 1260 and a 273 into this history. It's teaching the same thing. It's saying 6363. This chiastic structure here ends on January 11th. And here, what's left in this history, 273. Symbol of message to the, to the Levites. A message of March 27th. So this has a second witness here. But this here, this midnight chiasm, is this way mark here. And this way mark here is bound together by 15 and 3. And 153 is a symbol of you must prophesy again. Who is it that's going to prophesy again? It's the priests. They're going to prophesy to the Levites. That's your third witness that's teaching this overall theme. So when you go up to here, to our history, okay? You see, when Rafi and Paneum is opened up, and what is the message to the Levites? It's Paneum. Yes. It's Paneum. Paneum is July 18th for the priest. What was Rafi for the priest? November 9th. November 9th is where the counterfeit priesthood made their offering. They took November 9th and says, this is our offering, and they corrupted it. it was a, it's a genuine way, Mark, but they corrupted it. And we were beat down. We lost that battle. It was discouraging. It was hurtful. And the numbers lessened. Okay, so we lost the Raphael battle of November 9th, but our battle where we win is Paneum. That's July 18th. Okay, so our message to the Levites is the Paneum message. And our message of Rafi and Paneum was opened up on December 17th, 2016 in Wales. Seven days later, it's pre presented publicly for the first time. The emphasis in Bant Holland was about the Lord removing his hand. That's what I was teaching then. That's what I was seeing. This was a parallel to the Lord removing his hand back here. I, I wasn't seeing the details of Rafi and Paneum at all. But by 21 days later, on the 14th of January, Pan had opened up. What's Pan? It's Paneum. It's the message to the Levites. 
From here, from the point where the message to the Levites, Paneum, is opened up, is 1,533 days. That's the same amount of days as here. And if you divide it the same way, 1260 by 273, if you put that way mark in there, that way mark in 2020 is June 27th in the Gregorian. But June 27th in the Gregorian is June 22nd in the Julian. What does June 22nd have to do with Samuel Snow? It was Pentecost. It was the biblical day of Pentecost. Does June 22nd have any connection to our movement? Right over here. The money for this school was given on June 22nd, exactly three years later to the very day. We have the first camp meeting open, opening up the message of the midnight cry, Ezra 7-9. June 22nd is not only a symbol of Pentecost, it's not only a waymark in Millerite history, it is like a starting point for the midnight cry message in our history. So when we see June 27th here, and know that in the Julian it is June 22nd, we're seeing that from January 14th, 2017, until March 27th, 2021, and what is March 27th, 2021? It is the conclusion. It is the conclusion. It is the end. It is the conclusion of the March 27th chiasm. 327, 327, 327. This one here, this conclusion is right here. This is 2019, 2020, and 2021. That is the chiasm for Adventism. This is the chiastic structure of the Levites. So this message up here is opened up on January 14th, 2017. What message? The message of Pan, of Paneum. And it projects here to March 27th, saying that the message for the Levites is the message of Paneum. And Paneum is July 18th. And July 18th is Nashville. And you can't separate this 327 from this 327 or these 327 because it's a chiastic structure. What's the most important point in this chiastic structure? And we, we've learned from the very beginning of this movement that the definition of prophecy is what? Historical. Historical events are set before the people and prophecy is seen to be a figurative delineation of events leading down to the close of this earth's history. What historical event takes place here at the cross? The Seventh-day Adventist Church, the place where the Levites are going to come in, proclaim a hundred days of prayer that ends on 7-4. Was that the Raphia? Is that the Levites Raphia? 327, 2020? Not worried about the Levites Raphia. But you just said that their Panium is the message that they're getting, and I'm wondering if they're getting the message of Panium, they had to have Raphia first. So where are we marking their Raphia? No, I, I didn't say that that was their Panium. That's our Panium. Our, our Rafi is November 9th. Yep, our Paneum is July 18th. So where's their November 9th? D don't care. Don't care. Even if I knew, I don't know that I knew. Okay. No, okay. It's, okay. it's taking this, you're having trouble in following the basic logic, and, and right when you get to the point where you should be, it should be clicking on, you're wanting to take it to another dimension. Don't go there. Okay. You ha don't go there yet. This is, this is about here. Okay, I don't want to worry about fractals and priests, Levites, and Nethanims and how we plug in these various lines into those. Let's deal with our line. This is the one that's been opened up to us. First things first. Yes. I'm trying to wrap my mind around prophesy again. Okay. First disappointment, we know 
Millerites times typifies our time. That's 11 9. Yes. The false, that, that's our disappointment. So for us to prophesy again means that now we are going to make a correct prophecy just like the Millerites did for October, October 22nd, 1844, and ours is July 18th. That's the prophesy again. Absolutely, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. And the more the, the more closely you look at those dynamics, the more closely you'll see that they line up. Was April 19th, 1844, the first disappointment, was that a true fulfillment of prophecy or was it just a mistake? It, it was a true fulfillment of prophecy. What prophecy was fulfilled on April 19th, 1844? 13. The 1533. The 1335. So there was a true prophecy fulfilled there. Was there a true prophecy fulfilled on November 9th? Yeah. Amen. Was there a misunderstanding attached with April 19th, 1844? Yes. Was there one with November 9th? Yes. But once you pass that way, Mark, what are you going to do? You're going to prophesy again. And you're going to come up with the appointed time. Though the vision, Terry, wait for it. It shall surely speak at the appointed time. It's the same dynamic. Okay. I never thought, uh, there's only four pages of notes. I thought this one would be easy. So up there, the 126273, what I'm saying is that that way mark of June 27th, 2020 might seem, well, what's June 27th? But what it is, is it's June 22nd in the Julian. And June 22nd is Pentecost in Samuel Snow's history. It's one of the publications of dates of his publication. And it's the, the foundational waymark of Future for America as a school's history. This school started on June 22nd. And three years later to the very letter, we began to publicly, pro publicly proclaim the midnight cry message of Ezra 7-9, June 22nd. So up there in that line of January 14th, going to March 27th, 2021, that message of Paneum is going where? It's going over here on the right side of the board to the chiasm of Adventism, which I have in your notes called the Levitical chiasm. The chiasm of the Levites. The, the chiasm of Adventism, okay? So, notice in your notes, this would make it easier, probably, maybe not. I'll try to, I'm going to take some of this off. Probably shouldn't, because I may have to refer back to it. This history here, now, we're looking at this chiastic structure here. And I'm saying this is the chiasm of Adventism. They're the Levites, so it's the Levitical chiasm. I'm saying from Pan, first being presented right here. It's 1,533 days to here. So from here to here, we have a manifestation of the power of God. But a chiastic structure can be treated as one symbol. 9-7, 11-9, January 11th can all be treated as a, a singular symbol of midnight. This is, this is midnight at one point, but you can open it up. So what is this? This is the message to Adventism. Okay? And it begins in terms of March 27th in 2019. And if you go back to November of November 9th, 1989. What's November 9th, 1989? What's November 9th, 1989? The wall comes down, it's the beginning of this movement, and you go forward to this one, it is 1,533 weeks. Remind me again really quick of 327.19. 
March 27th, 2019. March 27th, 2020. March 27th, 2021. What, what took place here? Adventist Church Calls for Prayer. Okay, so what's this going to be about? Adventist Church Calls. It's going to be about the Levites. Okay, even without knowing what it is, because you know that the center point of a chiastic structure teaches the theme, you know this has to be something to do with the message to the Adventist Church. Who's going to give the message to the Adventist Church? Okay, get more specific. We are. We are. This movement, this ministry, this school. Okay, so back here in March 27th time period, what is the leader of this ministry doing? He's finishing his presentations in this school. Then he has a camp meeting where he's going to retire for five months. And here is coming to an, a conclusion that that work that's going to be reinstigated over here at 9-7. Okay, so, so anyway, let, let, let's take this one step at a time, this chiastic structure. Um, from, let me plug another date in here. This is January 14th, 1-14. 14th, 2017. Where do we see that date? Right here. When Paneum is first taught in Canada from this way mark to March 27th, as we've already seen, 1,533 days. So this structure from the beginning of this movement to the end of the Levitical chiasm it's all a glorious manifestation of the power of God. From here to here, 1533. From here to here, 1533. Weeks, days. Okay, it's, 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 the Lord has his arms around this history. If that's not too metaphorical. Okay, so now here's the chiastic structure. Um, from here to here, You'll notice that, anyway, I'm not going to deal with that right now. Here on the, on the bottom of page two, you have the statement by the Seventh-day Adventist Church from March 27th this year. From March 27th to July 4th, 2020, join believers all around the world in calling on Jesus in our urgent need. During this time, we will also be praying for the following. For a specific re requests regarding the effects of COVID-19 epidemic in our church and our mission, for deeper personal consecration and revival for, revival for mission, for our lo local churches to experience a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for our local churches to be the light to the world during this time of crisis. Why are they doing that? Prophetically, why are they doing that? You have to now begin to think about the four kingdoms of Daniel's last vision. You have to start applying what we've been studying. Why is the Adventist Church doing that this now, on March 27th, 2020, which is the center? Because we have four kingdoms in Daniel's last vision. And the first kingdom to go through this, this ebb and flow of Rafi and Paneum is which kingdom? Which kingdom first fulfills Raphia and Paneum in that line? King of the South. H how so? They win the battle. They, they when, do, when is the Raphia and Paneum for the King of the South? Raphia is July 18th for the King of the South. When does the King of the South come to its end? Let's put it that way, because that's a Paneum. December 25th, 2021 is Paneum for the King of the South. So they can't be the first that fulfill Paneum in this history going to 2021. Who's of those four kingdoms? What are the four kingdoms? Okay, we have the priest, the 144,000. What's the other kingdom? The dragon, that's the King of the South. The beast, it's not the beast, is it? Because the beast has to be hidden during this history. We're the priest, we're the 144,000. No, we don't go first. Who goes first? What's left? The false prophet. The false prophet. When was Raphia for the false prophet? When was the, the, the conservative 
constitutional figure defeated by the Southern liberal element in the story of the Constitution at the impeachment. When was Paneum, when did the conservative retaliate over the South? On 2520, February 5th, 2020, he's vindicated. And what happens immediately, immediately after 2520? A pandemic, economic panic, panic in the oil markets. Okay, so we have now the effects of Paneum at the level of the United States going on in planet Earth. Why is it that the Adventist church proclaims a hundred days of prayer? Because of the pandemic. It's, I just read it yeah. to you. Yeah. It's, we are to learn to reason from cause to effect. Their issue, what they're being confronted with, is the message of Paneum, and they're getting drawn into this, this Paneum situation by the first Paneum in the United States, which brings a pandemic. And that pandemic causes them to respond right here and proclaim a hundred days of prayer. But our message isn't about that paneum to them. What is our message to the Adventist church that is our paneum message to give to them? It's July 18th. That is paneum for who? For the Levites. For, for the priests. For the priests this, is, this is Elijah's offering. How is Elijah's offering confirmed? Fire comes down out of heaven. Okay, so they're, they're getting ready. They're getting ready to watch. Okay, they're watching during this 100 days of prayer. Like no other time, they have legitimate worldly cares. The whole world is in a pandemic. The economy is crashing. Unemployment is going through the roof, which means to the leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that their tithe is going down. Okay, They're in a crisis, and they say, let's take a hundred days of prayer and seek the Holy Spirit. So what has led them to this idea is the first revelation of Paneum, which is 2-5-20, the vindication of Donald Trump in the story of the false prophet and the Constitution of the United States. They're responding to that, reason from cause to effect. They proclaim this. The message that they're getting prepared to hear is our message. And our message is, Paneum is July 18th. And they're not going to buy into it too much until it happens. And when it happens, then what happens? They come, the faithful ones come and stand. Right? And Are you following that logic? Just as a, Go ahead. Just as a side note, at the same time that the Adventist Church is praying about this pandemic, so is the Pope of Rome. Yeah, to his favorite icon. Yeah, he, he went into his favorite icon and had a special prayer. And every time this current pope travels, he goes into this special icon, a, a picture of, of course, Christ and Mary. And it was supposedly printed by Luke, made by Luke the Apostle, which is a bunch of foolishness. But when did the pope go in and pray for this pandemic and, and dedicate all of this Catholic nonsense to this icon? On March 27th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. But are you following the logic here? We haven't looked. We haven't looked closely. I'm going to take 15 more minutes. We haven't looked closely at this chiastic structure. Yes. I know you're listing four kingdoms, and I know what they are, but really there's five because what you've put into play is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is responding to the false prophets scenario. So really that's like a, its own... What is the Seventh-day Adventist Church, prophetically? It's the Protestants of Millerite history. 
It's the Jews of the history of the Christ, uh, history of Christ, and it's the Egyptians that came out of Egypt and failed those ten tests. They're the covenant people that are being passed by as the Lord is entering into covenant with the covenant, chosen covenant people of that time in fulfillment of Genesis 15. Okay, so you can't take the story of Adventism out of it, but Adventism is telling us when the Lord is going to put His throne in this movement and lift up Jerusalem, and at the same time He's going to destroy Jerusalem. There's two Jerusalems going on, and the, one, the first Jerusalem is the former covenant people, which is Adventism. So yes, they're part of the story, but they're part of our story. And they're part of the story of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the story of the, the throne of David. So it's, it's there, it, it, and it, it's like the, the story of the prophets is the story of uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. But it's not simply that. The story of the prophets of Baal is also the story of the mega apostasy. That line comes in, same story. And that, another line that comes in there is the four generations. Okay, they're, they're failing, they failed the four generational test. So these themes, the basic themes I've put, it, put in there, I think we include Adventism into our line because they are the former covenant people. And it's from them that we have the gene pool, so to speak, that the Levites come out of. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. So, on page three of your notes... March 27th is a symbol of the message to the Levites. March 27th chiasm connects November 9th, 1989 by 1,533 weeks. The end of the March 27th chiasm reaches back to January 14th, 1,533 at the beginning and 1,533 at the end. Okay, do you follow what I mean? Here's a 1,533 beginning, here's a 1,533 at the end. This whole history is the history of the giving of the law. The, go ahead. And, excuse me. And a wall fell November 9th, 1989, and a wall will fall on 3-27-2021. Okay, a wall fell here, a wall's going to fall here, and there's a wall that's built right here. A fence brazen wall. A brazen wall that they're going to fight against. Why are they going to fight against when there's a wall made here in Jeremiah? Because of this message. This message is, is going to be the reason they fight against it. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to make you a, a brazen wall. On November 9th he did that. Okay, so um, 7.21 Paneum January 14th Pan is presented. It is 1,533 days from that date to March 27, 2021, from December. To, okay. All right. Here, Paneum, Raphia Paneum is opened up. Seven days later, it's, it's presented publicly in Bant, Holland. And 21 days later, the punchline of it, Pan, is presented in Holland. And I told you, remember, 721. Right? So, from March 27, 2019, okay, to July 31st, the 100, to July 31st, the 10th day of the 5th month, I cut off something, 126 days, Forget that first line, I have to figure out where that goes. The 100, and, the 100 days of prayer ends here on July 4th. Seven days to July 10th, inclusively. Okay. Seven days here. And then 21 days to here. You follow me? I'm going I'm to explain that. You see this 721? That's back here. Right here at the beginning of this prophecy, you have a 21 and a 7. Up here. Jesus is illustrating the end from the beginning. Okay? You with me? So when the, seven, the 100 days of prayer ends on July 4th, 
you now have this, this manifestation here. And let me read it to you so I get it straight. Seven days takes you to July 10th, here, inclusive. And then 21 days takes you to July 31st. And July 31st, 731 is what? Yeah, it's July 18th. It's a symbol of July 18th. Just what you said. But notice in this history, the 721, July 10th is what? In the biblical calendar, or, or in the, not in the biblical calendar, in its expression, it can be understood as the 10th day of the 7th month, the Day of Atonement. Um, the next one, July 18th, is a symbol of Islam, and it's a symbol of Islam because of July, 20, July 18th lining up with the 26th day of the fourth month. And the 26th day of the fourth month uh, in Revelation 9, five times, lines up with July 27th. Okay, this is the 26th day of the fourth month. And then the third way mark, July 31st, is the 10th day of the fifth month, which is what? The destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, so 80, 70, and the, when Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem, it was on the 10th day of the 5th month, and when um, Titus destroyed it, it was on the 10th day of the 5th of month, both times. It's a dis What's the destruction of Jerusalem? Sunday law. Sunday law. Um, but it's also, it's also in terms of the Adventist church. What is it? It's the end for the Adventist church. And it's a, a lifting up of an ensign here. What's of Jerusalem? Isaiah 2. The glorious holy mountain Jerusalem is getting lifted up as an ensign now. F from this point. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll have to come back on this. There's, there's too much. And it's obvious to me that, that we need to go over this one more time. But walk back through it and then bring it to a conclusion. And I, will, I guess I'll do that on Monday because Daniel's speaking on Sabbath. Um, I don't think, I, personally, maybe it's because I've been trying to grapple to put these into notes. I don't think this is too hard to see. Um, I could be wrong, I don't think it is, but the way that we've handled symbolism and lines throughout this entire history is the same thing we're doing with these, these dates and these numbers. Just If you treat them as a symbol, uh, you know, we're seeing 1533 here at the beginning, 1533 at the end. We're, we're seeing all these things confirmed. We're seeing this chiastic structure is teaching us certain things. The message, the message is this, the message is understood here. Um, could be the, it could be me, it could be my way of conveying this that is causing some hindrances to this, but let's bring this to a conclusion. Is there any... Hey, Go ahead. Um, can, I, I'm, I'm following your, your line of reasoning. Can you, can, I know time is kind of running, but can you speak a little bit in regard to, I've seen a 63 to the 63, and then a 273, and then we look at the November 9th all the way to December 25th, 2021, that was a 777, but then November 9th to July 18th is 252, and then we have another 252 on the other side till March 27th. Okay, now, 20 my brother here, my brother here, on the way over here, Kathy read a post that he put on the chat room to, as we were driving over here. And I said, give him a thumbs up. Okay, I followed your logic, okay? okay. But we're, we're not there yet. I, I, I'll try to take that up in the next presentation. But if, we, if I try to respond to what you're saying about the 252 and the 525 and the 777, I'm not there yet. You'll notice in the notes if you've downloaded it,
That's the next place we're going is the 777. And the logic of what you were observing fits in better there. But I have no problem. We walk through that with what you were saying in that chat. And, and, and just last point, tying on to what you're saying, if you can handle the, the after the 252 is taken off of the 525, leaving the 273, I guess my question as you're presenting is what is that 273 signifying if the Levites are handled at July 18th? July 18th, July 18th is when the Levites begin to be called in and they're called in progressively. This whole history from July 18th to December 25th is the gathering of the Levites. The whole history is going to have 273 over the top of it. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else out there? You look tired, Brother Dwight. <laughs> I can see him. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the wonderful light, but we are struggling with putting it all together. We ask that as we consider these things um, in our testing process, as we test these things um, hereafter, that you would give us the clarity of understanding that we need, um, that we might be part of the priesthood that prepares and, and proclaims a message for the Levites and thereafter for the Nethanims. Thank you for the work that you're doing with this message. Uh, thank you for putting the, the concepts in the correct place through your um, controlling the numbers, the chronology, and the dates, along with the histories that are lining up so perfectly. Please bless us now with this our day's activity, whatever we may be doing. Thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.